What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. Exciting video for FlightScope Nebo Plus users that are using GS Pro Golf Simulator software. Some huge integration announcements coming with the latest public beta release. So, fusion tracking, that ability that the FlightScope Nebo Plus can use the camera and the radar together for enhanced ball tracking and higher level of accuracy and Titleist RCT ball support for that higher level of spin accuracy, both now being integrated with GS Pro. This is huge for people looking for that higher level of overall performance for their FlightScope Mimo Plus when using GS Pro. Doesn't stop there though. They're even now taking the face impact data and they're pulling that into the software. Lots of people are using this advanced screen on GS Pro. It's a little pop out that you can actually just, you know, from their launcher software, use on another screen or, you know, on your monitor, maybe versus your projector. And not only do Pro Package users have all of their club data, but now your face impact users are gonna have a graphical representation of their face impact along with numerical numbers as well. You can see where it says club face, horizontal, and vertical impact there. We're gonna do a full review of this. We're gonna hit a, a couple different shots for you guys showing some shot shaping, looking at some higher spinning balls. That way we know that the RCT is performing really well. And then on top of that, we're going to go do some greenside chipping because we have this fusion tracking now. We should have enhanced chipping performance as well. So let's go ahead and just first show you the connection and how it's working. So I'm gonna go over to my PC and I'm gonna pull up the GS Pro flight scope connection. All right, and mine might look a little bit different than your guys's. It just gets scaled a little bit down with my 4K uh, monitor and be being actually uh, duplicated to a 16 by 10 projector. It looks like it, it looks okay right now. It's a little scaled down, but on this home screen, you'll see where it says fusion tracking. All right, so the reason you have the ability to turn this off is because if you go under the camera tab and you want to use the camera alignment that's built in, which is actually really nice, Fusion tracking takes the camera, so you actually have to release that camera, and you'll see my scaling kind of change on me there. And then uh, you'll notice that you have this alignment camera with elevation, brightness, all of that, tilt, roll, all built in. Make sure you go back to your uh, general tab and click Fusion Tracking. There is my scaling issue that I always see. Windows doesn't like my DPI scaling behavior, but uh, you guys probably won't experience that. It's a very unique setup I have, but you'll see my tilt, my roll, everything's all good. If you need to ever manually change the putting because you're like trying to putt right off the green or something, you can do that. Um, settings are important, guys. So this is where you're going to select your distance sensor to T, ball to screen, all of that. Make sure those are right. And this is actually where you're going to select Titleist RCT ball. Once you select that, make sure you hit save and apply. All right, that way you're maximizing fusion tracking, you're maximizing Titleist RCT, everything, and now we're good to go. I have a pretty cool hole set up for us here out at Muirfield Village Golf Club. I purposely selected a distance that's kind of in between. So this would be the difference between kind of me squeezing a pitching wedge draw in there, or maybe I hit like a nine iron cut, <clears throat> excuse me, well, look how small the green is with the front pin placement, all right? And with the bunkers and everything, let's do a quick flyover and just show you guys. All right, so we'll just do a quick little flyover, show you what this hole looks like. Um, I mean, you know, skinny green with a tucked front right pin. So the draw might be favorable because I have room behind the pin. Obviously, the fade might, you know, end up landing a little softer up there. Let's test them out and see how this unit performs overall. So pitching wedge, generally can spin it up in the 8,000 range, depending on if I'm clipping it well. I like to hit it a little below center, generate uh, the most spin I can. Um, and then we'll switch to a nine iron, try to cut some shots in there as well. So if you are someone researching FlightScope Mevo Plus, you're looking to purchase the unit or your current user looking to add on either the pro package or face impact, make sure you check out my link and discount code, uh, discount code pin to the top of the comments and put in the description. That way you guys can save the most amount of money. It does help support the channel too, which I appreciate. I'm not gonna aim in the software. I'm actually just gonna aim here in the sim. Mevo Plus allows for that. So I'm gonna aim kind of like right edge of the green, I think would be the right play. Put a little bit of draw on this, squeeze a little extra distance. I'd rather, you know, get it to the pin or even behind it in this case, if this was the shot I was going for, to be safe, I'm not coming up short. Hopefully I drew that enough. Come on in there. Notice I clipped that really well, 8,500 spin. Oh, just in the gimme zone. So it actually worked out really well. I landed it right on the edge of the front of that green. Now, that was not the best impact. I clipped it nice and low on the face. 
could have been a little bit higher. Probably would have got me a little more distance than I'm used to. Um, it was a little bit towards the toe. Um, you know, not a bad shot. Trust me, I would take that every time. I and mean, we're talking about millimeters here. So I was 9.4 millimeters below center and I was 8.7 millimeters towards the toe. Now, some people uh, might recognize that it's a negative number towards the toe, positive towards the heel. Might be a little confusing, but that's how Facebook does it. I checked with the developer. That is, did I say Facebook? That's how Flightscope does it. Hey, I got two big companies uh, confused there. But that is how Flightscope does it, is that it is a negative number towards the toe. So let's just go ahead and we'll try to make a better contact here. I'm obviously hitting a shot that's, you know, not something I'm gonna hit every single day. See if we can make some good impact on a draw. Probably squeeze extra distance out of it here with some good impact. So maybe not swing quite as hard. All right. Now you notice that time I wasn't nearly as uh, low on the face, <clears throat> and I actually ended up getting you know better distance out of it. Still broke the 8,000 barrier as far as spin goes. I like that shot. It's a safe shot in there. <clears throat> and if you notice, excuse me, you go over here to your club data, I'm coming 8.1 to end out because I'm aiming to the right. So if I was aimed up square coming 8.1 8 to end out, that would be a lot. But I was aiming to the right, so keep that in mind. And then my face was a one degree open to the target, and then it was 7.1 closed to the path. All right, so it's just so nice having all that. I have the graphical representation of where that ball hit, and you can obviously see the numbers are within a millimeter or so um, from the center. I mean, that is just really, really good stuff. So let's grab a nine iron, much more difficult shot for me, because essentially if I wanted to maybe, let's say, play it safe and try to get one to land soft, I could hit a soft eight iron and try to fade a ball in there. So let's see if we can do that putting the Mevo Plus to the test for shot shaping. Now I do have my face impact light on. I don't have a lot of ambient light in this space, so I should point out to you guys, I'm getting face impact nearly every single time. I mean, I think I've seen it miss once out of my testing. Um, it's very, very dark in here, as most of you know. So make sure you have ambient light, not just light over the hitting area, you know, for optimal lighting conditions for your fusion tracking and your face impact. <clears throat> Excuse me, the cottonwood is just really getting me this season, so I'm doing my best to battle that. But let's see if we can cut a ball in there. All right, it's cutting. Question is, is did I take too much off? Is it the right distance? Oh, I kind of overcut it just a little bit, and it put me in trouble. And I'll tell you what, cutting it to the right has less of a miss area than the draw in past the pin. All right. It wasn't, uh, you notice how that was kind of towards the toe. I mean, you know, I'm lining the ball up forward. I mean, this is just a different uh, swing for me. Let's see if we can get a little better contact here. Trying to hold that face off and generate that little cut. This one could be good. Oh, not a bad play at all. Even with a little bit of the undulation, we're bringing the ball back. So, um, you know, honestly, and you notice how that was lower on the face? I, I like being lower on the face. Ten's probably pushing it. I mean, it wasn't a thin shot, but it was pushing it. It was right there, you know. Get a little bit lower than that, and you could be hitting it a little bit thin. Um, but that, honestly, um, was a really good example of shot shaping, sh looking at the different impact. Notice, uh, what am I, 2.2 out to in on that and then 2.5 open. So that's how I'm generating that you know, uh, fade of the ball. So let's go ahead and do some chipping now. I haven't done a ton of chipping testing yet, but I think this would be like, let's say that you miss it over to the left. I think that would be a common miss. I'm drawing it. I end up over here, you know, left of the green. I'm gonna have to chip it obviously. Um, and, and talk about a slippery chip, right? Now I will tell you, I'll pull back up that flight scope connection interface and I'll show you how it automatically selects chipping. See how it's automatically selecting chipping? So we're good to go. Now where am I going to aim? Well you can see it just kind of going down to the left. It's going to release out of the rough so it's going to be a very gent gentle type chip that I'm going to have to hit. So I'm going to aim a little bit left and probably only try to carry this thing. I mean I don't know. Probably only uh, eight yards or so. Call it 25, 30 feet, let it roll out. See if that was soft enough. Ho, 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 
Look how slippery that is. So, I mean, that was really what I was trying to do. Let's see uh, if we can put the Mevo to the test, lay the face down and try to do like a little more of a higher launching, you know, uh, outside in, you know, a little cut flop. See if that works. Not quite a flop, but you know what I'm saying. Got that thing launching up high. Oh, that was the shot. That was the shot. And I'm even getting impact on that. And so that generally comes off the toe, which it did. And, I can, and I'm very impressed that it is getting impact because what happens is when I come outside in, it, it launches kind of off the toe of my wedge and it's picking up that impact. I have not put the Flight Scout Mevo Plus to that test yet um, with that type of impact. So really cool that it's able to pick that up. Now let's just try one more normal shot. Maybe say someone is trying to launch this a little bit lower. This would be really challenging for the unit to pick up a soft kind of lower chip. Ooh, it was able to pick it up. But notice how that wouldn't really be your play out. Comes out hot, and it looks like I was able to finally trick the face impact. I mean, I actually hit that a little bit thin. So that was kind of almost a little bit of a bladed wedge shot. We'll try to hit one more where I don't hit it so thin and give it a chance to actually read impact. That was a little higher launching. Yeah, so it looks like the, oh, almost hold that thing out. So it looks like the, the face impact got a little bit challenged with those, which is okay. Um, like I said, the more lighting that you have, the better it's going to do. Am I really worried about face impact on little tiny chips like this? No, but it's really cool how it's picking some of those up too. So um, I would have to say, you know, chipping is working really well inside of GS Pro. I mean, like, what am I carrying this, you know, five yards or so? Um, I mean, we could really put it to the test if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and move the ball. What would be another miss? Like I was just a tiny bit short in the rough, so I wasn't able to, I mean, this is like the impossible chip, right? You're in the rough. You only should be able to carry this maybe 10 feet or so. That was a little low. There you go. Carried it only three yards. So you're able to do it all. Um, I'd have to say the Fusion tracking um, along with RCT Titleist support. Uh, I mean, this is, this is really, really awesome news for everyone that is using a FlightScope Mevo Plus along with GS Pro Golf Simulator software. This is a beta release. If you guys notice anything that could be adjusted, you know, maybe uh, before the final you know, revision comes out, Make sure you let GS Pro know. If you're looking, like I said, to purchase FlightScope Mebo Plus, Face Impact, um, Pro Package, any of that, use my discount code. It works on the unit and the add-ons. So like I said, that's in the description and pinned to the top of the comments. I'm glad we pushed the unit here a little bit. And uh, you know, like I said, we were shot shaping, tiny little chips, different types of chips. Um, you know, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing so far. So it'd be interesting to see if I really lit the area up a lot, you know, because it's so dark in here, you know, outside the hitting area if the impact would work on those tiny little chips. I mean, even when I use my TrackMan 4 unit, you're talking about a unit that's, you know, I mean, what is it, 20 times the, the amount? Um, you know, not that much, but close. Uh, you know, it, it's not picking up impact on shipping. So, um, you know, maybe here and there. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where I don't think that's really expected, um, but it was cool to see that it was able to do it on some of those as well. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you comment below questions, thoughts, all that type of stuff. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned. There'll be a lot more coming soon.